Hi, welcome back to the channel. So this video today is about converting this tent. If you remember this, this is my eight-man teepee. We're back in Dave's garden because I'm just doing some um, measurements really. Because I'm going to convert this into a full-blown 12 berth camper van. No, not really. I'm going to convert it into a hot tent. Be nice though, wouldn't it? 12 berth camper van. But this ain't going to stretch today. So hot tent is where we're going with it. So let's have a look at it. This is um, pitched without the inner. Anyway, the plan is to have no inner and then have the stove jack here coming across there, down with a silicon fiberglass for the stove to go through the pipe, the flue. And then on the outside, I'll put another rain cover with the Velcro to cover that for when it's um, not in use or in the summer when I've got the inner in. But the reason it's going there is only one reason, and I'll show you that. Is because if I start the stove jack under that flap, it'll be out of the river. So the top seam will go across where that Velcro tab is, and it'll be underneath this. So when it's raining, it won't get into the stove jack top. So I can have it coming down. So that's the only reason I've chosen that area, which I'm lucky to have on the tent to have that. Otherwise I'd have to create a new flap to go over the actual yeah I'd have to create a new flap to go over the top of the stove jack when it's not in use just to stop any water getting in ingress so I'm doing it as cheap as possible so I'm just trying to do it as a budget and at the moment I've paid about 15 to 16 pounds on materials I bought a fire blanket which I'm going to cut to make the fiberglass silicon which I've bought silicon as well which I'm going to paste on the fire blanket to create a silicon fiberglass sheet and I've purchased what else did I get oh velcro that was £7.50 for three meters of velcro which I think is enough to do the whole um, lot with three like with two layers so you can have the opening the silicon sheet and then the rain cover and they all have to have their velcros on them so I've purchased that and don't know about sewing yet. Either I'm going to attempt it or I'm going to try and get someone to do it for me. I haven't got a sewing machine. I don't. I can hand sew, but oh, the amount of time that's going to take. And the neatness, it won't be very nice, will it? It'll look awful. Every time I think I'm going to wake up back in the jungle. Every time I think I'm going to wake up back in the jungle. So this is phase two. I've got the tent on the table, laid out over it, so I've only got the one skin. So I've put the tent all behind it and down the side, so I've only got this one skin to work on. And then I'm going to do the measurement again, and then we're going to put the, um, this is the Velcro I've bought. It's the standard Velcro. I've got three meters of it. So I'm going to, I've worked out three meters is exactly right for me to do 37 meters by 45 down and another 30 to make us an oblong and it works out at three meters if you work those measurements out if you're doing four times each so I need to cut this to measurement and then I need to get it onto the surface because there's no holes going to get cut in the tent yet I'm going to double sided tape it which I've got here this stuff's really good hopefully it'll stick the velcro I use it for other bits and bobs and then I stick it on, get it square, and then I've got the measure there as well. And then once I've sewn it, as well as stick it on, I'm going to sew it on, I can make the hole because I need to fold, once I've cut the hole, I need to fold the tent material around underneath this Velcro and then restitch it again so I can get a nice, thicker, stronger, I don't want the edge of, a, of the tent material just sewn to the edge, I want it actually looped around. They might even double loop it around so it's actually a hem. It's going to have to be done by hand, because I haven't got a machine. Right, so I'm going to measure 30 centimetres. As you can see on this wall. It's going to be there. And it will go across the top of there. So when the Velcro is stitched on, it will go over that Velcro. So the reason this is, is to keep it underneath this flap. So when it's upright and it's erected, any rain won't get in the top of the actual flap. 
I've got to get it right because I've only got enough to do this once. I don't have any spare Velcro after this. 45. So this is just placed on by hand, it's loose, it can be moved, and this is how it's going to look. So that short piece I've got is, is this one, it'll just go up and flush with it here. Because it will be under the cover, it's going to be the best place to place it, it'll just be flush there. Whereas the others are going to overlap, and they'll be sewn over each other, like this, that was the idea. So the hole won't be 45, it'll be 41 that way. And there's a reason I want it longer this way. It's because when the chimney comes, where the flue comes up through here, which I haven't cut yet, which will be later on, I don't want it coming up at an angle where it gets near this. I don't want it near this, whereas it comes at an angle up through this. So I want it to be at least a way away, so it might come through the bottom of, not the bottom, but not the middle, perhaps a bit lower, a bit lower on this. So it's got room to stay away from everything. I'm going to sew these corners together so I know that I've got a square. Sew these together before it gets laid on here with some tape and then we'll do all that. I've just sewn all these corners together just to keep it together so when I put it on it'll be a lot easier. The one that was short I've basically had to sew it just to the edge because it was two centimetres short. This material is two centimetres so now it's a square even though I've sewn it just to the edge. That's all I can do, and I've put it up the top because that'll be protected by weight from the weather. So I'm going to attempt to peel this back in off and stick this down the best I can. I know this is in the right place because I just measured it. It has to be 16 centimetres from there, and it is, roughly, and that one's 16, so we're good. Oh. It should stay on here enough for me to sew it. We've got a crease under there, but yeah, it's not easy. I'm just using ordinary cotton. That's going to be extremely double cottons now, isn't it? Double nylon. Yeah, my throat. It's just tough. That's because I'm going for a double sewed corner. I haven't got a thimble. And a pair of pliers to pull that through. So the champ comes back into action. As the champ should. It's a champ. Ow. But I need to push it through as well. This is going to take quite a long time. So it turned out <clears throat> I only needed this, the um, pliers for the corner. This bit here, one seam of um, Velcro is not that difficult to get through. It's the corners that are hard. Obviously the tent material is nothing. The needle goes through it like butter. 
two hours close to two hours to sew all of that up now we have it sewn going through the back and you can see it's just a single stitch through the center to hold it all in place the plan now because i've been thinking about it while i've been sewing it is to cut the hole Remembering this is two centimetres thick, wide I should say, if I cut the hole and have four centimetres overlap, or five, on each of the sides and the bottom and tops, I can double fold them, put them behind here, and then run double stitching down. Either by hand, which will be fine, but it's just a matter of time. Sewing machine, honestly, once you've got the thing set up and you've got a hole in it, you'll probably be able to do it. And it probably won't take more than a few minutes. Let's mark out where we're going to cut this. So I know this is two centimetres thick. It says it is 20 mil. So I want it to fold under once and then fold under itself again. So if I make it three and a half mil, sorry, 35 mil, it'll fold under at 15 out, which will fold back under itself, but not go now let's make it 40. So I know what I've got to cut. I've got a final ruler now. Join these up. Join the dots. So I'm going to join the dots. But I just want to double check I've got it right. Yeah, yeah, it's best to measure 18 times and then cut it once. I couldn't find a ruler, so I've had to go with this piece of trunking. Yeah, I've drawn myself a little picture. What do you think of that? So the idea is to cut the inner out, and cut those slits, and now fold back. And then I'll double-sided tape it so it all stays in place, and I'll stitch it. I'll start cutting. Cutting my tent. I hope this material doesn't start ripping and I have so much trouble trying to use it. I think I might change my mind actually. Do I really need a stove jack? See if it does tear because oh, it's strong it ain't, it ain't gonna tear, it just has that feeling like it's gonna tear. I wasn't gonna test it on that, I tell you. Right then, so the idea I'm cut that away. The idea is this will fold over and over again behind here so you end up like that and sewn that'll be perfect that'll give me what I need then I can seam seal where I've sewn it hopefully that'll be enough not sure but if I tape it fold it Tape it, hang on, tape it there, 
and fold it over. Yeah. We have a bit of a disaster. When I was cutting the hole out, the material was folded under and I've nicked it. And I've got a hole in it. So I'm going to have to do my first tent repair at the end of this and try and repair that. Which is a hole in a piece of the tent we don't want a hole in. So, disaster. But it teach me how to repair a tent, wouldn't it? So that's another thing I've got to find out about. And don't let it get us down. Don't let it get us down. Right, I'm going to try and make a patch for this mess up I had. I don't know whether this material has got an inside and outside. I'll say it has. I mean, that's the inside for this. No, that's the inside. It's got a sort of thick feel to it. So I'm going to create a patch by putting some double sided on and flipping it over. Right, I've sewn, all this has been sewn on the inside now, all the way around, the whole thing. Right, I've put a patch on this. It is basically double sided tape on a bit of the centre I cut out stuck to it and I'm only going to stitch it if I have to. On the inside I'll just put a bit of duct tape over the slit. So it is protected with duct tape but it doesn't look great does it? So now it's got the little diamond patch on it so water will hit this but the double sided tape is amazing and it might be enough just to stop it coming through. It'll be tested. I'll stitch it if I have to. The hole is done. Been reinforced. I've hand stitched everything, and the corners, all the way around it. It's been stitched all the way down on the inside seam, all the way around it. Like I say, extra on the corners. So let's just bang a bit of Velcro on it and see how it rips off. And it won't pull off this. This is solid. I'm, ha I'm confident that I can just bang covers on, put the stove jack on, and just pull off. I don't have any issues with that at all. Sound about the corners peeling up when you pull it off, but from what I can see here, that's just not the case because they're so sewn down well. So I need to make the flaps, and I'd love to have a sewing machine, but whether I can get hold of one, I don't know. I might have to do it by hand. It's only going to take about six hours, but at least it will be done. I've still got to make the um, silicon blanket because my friend was there so he's gone now he's here for a few hours so I'm gonna get on with it all right I've just cut out this panel of the fire blanket which is the fiberglass and now I need to coat it with some silicon paste mix so we're going to sort that out There's quite a bit in there, probably a bit more than that though. This might be enough. It's about half the tube to be honest. 
then you might have to put a 50 mix in so it's just go with it and try and get it watery this is the white spirit probably about a 50 mix just guesstimating now I should probably stir this with something instead of a brush. Let's use that nozzle. It's not really mixing very well, it's all at the bottom. It doesn't seem to be mixing very well. This is what I read you should do. It's definitely melting it down, but is it creating a thin paste of silicon? I'm splashing it. Look at that. That's not really. I don't think that's what I want. Like I said, I don't know. It's like wallpaper paste. Right, I'm going to put it on and see what happens. Flick this onto the wall, melt my paint off. Blobby. Probably come back in the morning and find out the table's melted or the varnish. Maybe I'll go through this bin liner. Doesn't look great, does it? supposed to dry. This is how you make the seam sealer as well. Right, it is the next day and I am painting on seam sealer from yesterday. So it's been left now for about eight hours and it's turned into a proper paste. Just like um, wallpaper paste. So it's absorbed all of that white spirit and gone into a proper, what I would call a consistency, which is which was right there then. So I'm painting it on the inside of the stitching, so it seems to there in it. The um, fire blanket I painted is dried, still got a bit of a smell to it from the um, it wasn't mixed correctly was it we know well i know now from this but is this painting on really well you can see on there go over all these stitches This should dry and leave a sort of a rubbery, a rubbery coating on there. Let's just try and flip it. 
clip that. Yeah, it's been about seven hours since I painted the other one. Surely just backing the stitches, that's all I'm doing, painting over those. And that's that. I've also gone over I've gone over the top of that patch so just the top V of it I've done and the consistency is perfect it actually feels right now so perhaps when you, if you do one of these you should make that stuff up make up your white spirit and silicon an hour or two before you think you're going to need it because mine's still ready to paint it's a lot of the white spirits evaporated into the well it's evaporated and it's gone into the silicon so that is going to be perfect for that seam stitch seam sealer and i've got to get on and make the other one i'll go and get the sheet and show what that looks like so there's the sheet i painted it's basically dry it's got a rubbery sticky feel into it but this side hasn't I'm wondering if I should just paint this side as well then I I don't need to I don't think because I think it's going to be waterproof it's definitely rubber but I don't think I have to do the other side I could do it it's more it has impregnated it is going to be folded and sewn onto the velcro so if I do the other side just make it a bit more difficult to do all that I think I'll leave this side just one side I think I'll be done 